on the journey of a Christian. And so this is our new topic that we started last week. And we've been going back to the Old Testament, and we've been in Exodus, and looking at God's people, the Israelites, and they're leaving Egypt and all that took place there. But we're looking at this picture of actual, these are actual events that happen with God's people in the Old Testament. But they also foreshadow, they also point to their figures and they illustrate of what is taking place with us as Christians today. And this is made very clear. Jake brought out even the verses in the New Testament where Paul says, all the things that happened to them, they were even they were written down for us, for our admonition, for our help. And they apply very much to us today. And so a quick recap. So last, last week with Egypt was brought out that Egypt is where actually we all begin. That Egypt was ruled by Pharaoh and the Egyptians, and God's people, the Israelites, were there, but they were under slavery. They were in bondage. They couldn't worship God. They couldn't even live a normal life as they were meant to because of the tyranny, the bondage of a Pharaoh. And that caused them to cry out to God for a Savior. And so in that picture, though, God sent Moses to deliver the people. And in that delivery, there was the plagues that came upon them. But one of the plagues was of the death angel killing the firstborn. And then God gave the provision to his people of the lamb that would that they could slay a lamb, put its blood on the doorpost of their house, and then the death angel would pass over them. And then afterwards, all these things, Pharaoh let them go, and they had to cross over the Red Sea that God parted. And then Pharaoh and all the Egyptians chased them, were swallowed up in the sea. And all these things happened to them, but they, they apply to us as believers that we all begin in the world under the tyranny of Satan instead of Pharaoh. Um, the Bible tells us very clearly that Satan is the ruler of this world, and there's the authority of, of darkness and all these that are in this world, influencing things, affecting things, and we all begin there under the tyranny of Satan, the bondage of sin, and God delivered us. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, as the lamb of God to take away the sin of the world, to not only deal with our sins, but also he made it a way for us to get out, get out of Egypt or get out of this world. And even as the church, that's one of the names of the church is ecclesia, which is called out. We've been called out called out of what we were in, all the negative things, all the bondage of this world. And so we went through those things. So this is how, as a Christian, our journey begins. We are there. We believe in the Lord Jesus. We receive him. And then there's an exodus. We, we leave. There's our baptism. But what's the next point? on our journey because this again this topic that we're covering is the journey of a christian so we start there we believe in the lord jesus the lamb of god his blood is shed for us we leave egypt we experience um, we go through baptism there's a separation now between us in the world in satan but now the children of israel are in the wilderness they're still on their journey towards the good land, towards God, but they're hungry. And so 
now we're coming to how God makes the provision for them in the wilderness to feed them, to meet this need of their hunger. And so I wrote on the board, and we'll read some. So this is just Exodus 16b. It is, so it's speaking about the manna. It is the bread which Jehovah has given you to eat. So God made a provision because now you have this great multitude of around a million or more people that are now in the wilderness and they need a way to be sustained. They need a way to receive nourishment, supply for their journey. And so God provides them with manna, which is quite miraculous. And so, um, there's some verses up here. So in 16.4, it says, Then Jehovah said to Moses, I will now rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them whether or not they will walk in my law. So God would send, he would rain down bread or manna from heaven. And that each day they would gather it, their day's portion. So this was an everyday thing. And then in 15, it says that when, and when the children of Israel saw it, okay, so God's raining down. When they saw it, they said to one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread which Jehovah has given you to eat. So this is, this is quite mysterious because they've had bread before, but never bread from heaven that got rained down. So even when they saw it, they're like, what is this? But this was the heavenly food, the heavenly bread, the heavenly manna that God was given to them while they were in the wilderness on their journey. And so this is how they physically were supplied their whole time in the wilderness. But how does this apply to us as believers today? Because we don't wake up every morning and then go outside and we find physical manna and we're like, hey, this is breakfast right here. But this does apply to us. And the New Testament tells us very clearly what is the manna that came down from heaven for us to eat every day for our Christian journey. And so for that, John 6, and Jesus tells us very clearly what this is. So John 6, 31. So this was the people there. They say, with Jesus, they say, our fathers, the Jewish people, ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. And 32, Jesus therefore said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Moses has not given you the bread out of heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. They said, therefore, to him, Lord, give us this bread always. In 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall by no means hunger, and he who believes into me shall by no means ever thirst. And then also just some more verses on this. In verse 48, Jesus keeps speaking in this section. I am the bread of life. And 49, your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. Verse 50, the bread, this is the bread which comes down out of heaven that anyone may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he shall live forever. So Jesus tells us very clearly, yes, God made the provision for the children of Israel with this physical bread that came down miraculously out of heaven, provided by God for his people. But Jesus says, I am the bread. I'm the real 
living bread. They ate of that bread and they died. But he who eats of me, you won't die. You will live forever. He is the living bread that was sent down out of heaven from the Father to meet our need, to supply us, that we could take him in. And then, okay, so, but how do we practically take in Jesus as food to supply us? And so there's some more verses here. So I put down in in 63, Jesus starts speaking about, because they kind of ask, well, how do we, how do we eat you? This is kind of tough. And so Jesus tells them, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words which I have spoken to you are spirit in our life. So when Jesus is speaking this, he's not telling them to physically eat him. He's talking, telling them spiritually, you can take me in through my living operative word. The words which I have spoken to you are spirit and life. And also, I have another verse up here, John 4.4. 4. This is even, sorry, Matthew, thank you. Matthew 4.4. 4. This is what even Jesus himself did. This is right after he was baptized. And so he went out in the wilderness and he's fasting for the 40 days, 40 nights, and being and Satan comes to tempt him. And so I'll read even verse three to give the, and the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, speak that these stones may become loaves of bread. Jesus answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So even Jesus, he's there in the wilderness and he is fasting physically from physical food, but he's eating. He's living off of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And we have God's word. We have God's word, which is a provision to us to supply us, to strengthen us, that we can feed on for our Christian journey. And actually, it's crucial that we do feed upon God's word and we come to God's word. Because without God's word, we cannot make this journey. We can't continue on our journey without God's word. The children of Israel could not have continued on their journey to the promised land without this provision given to them by God. They would have starved. They wouldn't have made it. to the. They would have had no strength, no energy, and they would have died, not ever being able to make it because without this this provision given to them by God. And the same with us in our Christian journey. We need God's word. We need to come to God's word. We need to receive God's word because this really supplies us spiritually. It strengthens us. It gives us the way to keep going on in our journey. And what's so wonderful, just as we saw, God gave the manna to eat, to receive, and it was given every single day. So a new day, we have a new day. Guess what? We got God's word. It's, it's new today. It's fresh today. It's living today. Every day we have God's word. And something also in this that I just want to, so going back to, um, actually I wanted to look up some other verses here. I don't know if we, so going back to Exodus 21. Up here. So in 21 of Exodus 16, 21, it says, and they gathered it morning by morning each one according to his eating. And when the sun became hot, it melted. So this is just an interesting detail that's given here concerning the manna. So, okay, it miraculously came down day by day. It was there to feed God's people. But they had to gather it. And even here, they had to gather it in the morning. 
So there was, there was a particular aspect of this manna of getting it in the morning. And so I just want to encourage you all, if you have never done this, when you wake up, it's a good time to come to God's Word, to start your day, to begin by coming to God's Word and opening to Him and taking Him and taking His Word as your food supply. If you've never, if you've never done I would encourage you to try this. See if there's something there in the morning. Because I could testify, just for myself, I know many others, there is something special about starting your day with God's Word. Rather than starting it, you know, cell phone, other things, it's like we have God's Word. We can begin our day and just come, even if it's a little bit of time, even if it's a few minutes, we start, we can just start. Lord, come to Him. Come to His Word. Open His Word. And really, as we come to His Word, our heart is we're coming to Him. And then His Word really becomes food to us. It supplies us. It strengthens us for our, our, our Christian journey. And some other aspects of this that from this picture and that apply to us very much today is so not only it came day by day, it came in the morning, but in Numbers we have this other account concerning it. Numbers 11, 4 through 6. So... As they were coming day by day to this manna, the children of Israel, they had a unique response to it that that wasn't so good. So in verse 4 it says, In the mixed multitude that was among them lusted exceedingly, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our appetite is, has gone. There is nothing at all but this manna to look at. <laughs> so God's miraculously providing them with manna and they're reminiscing, remembering all oh, oh, the food from Egypt. It was so good. But now all we got is manna every day. Manna, manna, manna. What about, what about the leeks, the garlic, the cucumbers, the fish from Egypt? That, so they're, they're struggling with this manna. And their tastes were fully acclimated to the stuff in Egypt. And now they're... They're like tasting something new that they've never tasted. In their, yeah, have you heard of the expression? It's it's an acquired taste. <laughs> Some you know it's like something that's like, hey, you know, a lot of people even like coffee. A lot of people don't initially like start off liking coffee, and they're like, oh, you got to just keep drinking it. It's an acquired taste. But people keep drinking, and they're like, oh, I love coffee. I can't, oh, go, I can't go a day without coffee. Or you get the, the smell, and they're like, oh, I need my coffee. So it was like, they didn't start that way, but they acquired a taste for coffee. And it was like, giving another example, like, I grew up in a very small town in Ohio, and our food variety was pretty narrow. It was like your meat, potatoes, some vegetables, we were pretty even strict on our veg. Like, we would eat like corn. You had your green beans. You had your potato. You had your potatoes. You had baked beans, but we didn't even go that far in vegetables. That was about the extent of our vegetables. Out of all the vegetables out there, is about like all we ate. So then, even like coming to college, eating other like foods from other cultures, it's like, what is this? It's like, this is weird. This is, but now it's like some of this is my favorite food and I love it. But it was like, initially it's like, what is, I want my meat and potatoes. I just want my green beans. That's what I'm, I'm from. But spiritually, we, we all grow. I mean, there's a lot of things that, you know, we're, we're just used to in this world. 
We got our YouTube. We got so much other things that occupy our time that even you would say our soul has grown up feeding upon. And it's like, we want to be, and it, we're created this way, to be satisfied. We take these things in. Physically, we take in food not only to survive, but we like it. It satisfies us. You know, you have a good meal. You're like, ah, you just like, that satisfied me. And we seek out things to satisfy us, even our soul. We seek things that we enjoy, things that give us, that satisfy us, even worldly things, things from this world. But the real satisfaction comes from God's living eternal word. All the other things, they're temporal. And yes, we're, okay, I enjoy this, I do this. But if we're, if we're honest with ourselves, we just realize there's, there's something deeper within us that these things of the world, they never satisfy. People give their whole life like money, man, I just need more money or I need this. I just need the best career. And they give their time, their energy, everything they pour into these things. And a lot of them, sadly, they end their life like, is this it? Or they, they, they get what they're after. Like now I've got all the money. Why is it so miserable? That, that doesn't, that's not meeting my real need within. Some, they don't, you, they, it's like even they don't have the utterance. But we were created in the image of God. We were created even in within our being. There's a longing for the eternal things. Our eternal God created us and he gave us a spirit and he gave us a longing for something eternal that the temporal things of this world will never satisfy. And we can spend our whole life, this thing, this thing, the leeks and the garlic, because that's how we, we were raised and we grew up liking these things. But we can hit a point where we realize this does not satisfy. This does not really meet that deep need deep within me. But God's word meets that need. As we come to God's word, as we take it in as our food, it really satisfies us deep within. And even we, we covered our first topic, we covered even about as newborn babes, longing for the guileless milk of the word that in order that by it you may grow into salvation. And the next verse we talked about, if you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. That really when we come to God's word in such a way, this is one of the main ways we taste and see how good God is, is through his word. But don't be discouraged, if, you know, if, if we've come to it before and it's like we haven't had, or we even give an example, if we've even, if negatively we've had bad taste through others or we came to God's word, we share it as like a rule book. This is the rule book that I need to keep and do everything in here. And it just, if we came to it in the wrong way, or even through others, it gave us a bad taste. Don't, don't give up on God's word. It is so good. Our God is so good. But we should be those that stay in God's word, taking it in such a way that it becomes our food and it supplies us. It strengthens us for our Christian journey. Because this is how we go on as a Christian. We can't neglect God's word, which is the real manna, the real food, the heavenly food, the heavenly bread that God gave us to supply, strengthen us for our Christian journey. So I'm done with my sharing.